This video is going to show us a strategy for comparing rates, this time by using the unit rate. Be sure the date and topic are at the top of your page. The essential question for this video is how can we use unit rates or a unit rate to compare different rates? Sometimes we want to know who is faster or which item is cheaper. Unfortunately, sometimes the information we are given is hard to compare. Let's look at a few examples. Let's assume that Mr. O'Neill can run 5 miles in 48 minutes, and Mr. Olson runs 3 miles in 22 minutes. Our job is to figure out who is a faster runner. Right now, we're trying to compare two different mile amounts and two different time amounts. That makes it really hard to know immediately who is the faster runner. One way to determine who is the faster runner is to find the unit rates for both of our teachers. If we can find how long it takes each of them to run one mile, then we have a common number that we can compare. Let's start by finding the unit rate for Mr. O'Neill. I'm going to use equivalent ratios that are set up as fractions to do that. It takes Mr. O'Neill 48 minutes to run 5 miles, so I've made that into a part-to-part -part ratio. I want to know how long it takes him to run 1 mile, so I'm going to record that as the denominator in my equivalent ratio that I've set up here. I can see right away that I am scaling down. Right? I am dividing 5 by 5 to figure out his speed for his 1 mile. That means, to keep these equivalent, I'll need to divide 45, excuse me, 48 by 5 as well. By doing this, I'll be able to see how long it takes him to run 1 mile. I see that it will take him 9 and 6 tenths of a minute, so a little over nine and a half minutes, to run one mile. That is his unit rate. We'll do the same thing for Mr. Olson, again finding the unit rate. So again, I'm going to use equivalent ratios that are set up as part to part that look like fractions. I know he runs 22 minutes. It takes him 22 minutes to run three miles. I want to know how long it will take him to run just one mile. So I have the denominator of my equivalent ratio as one for one mile. I can see again that I'm scaling down and this time it looks as though I'm dividing three by three to figure out one mile. So I'll do the same thing up here to my 22. So I'll need to divide 22 by three to see how long it takes him to run one mile. From my calculations, I can see that it's going to take Mr. Olson about seven and a third of a minute, so seven and three repeating minutes, to run his one mile. That's his unit rate. Now that I've calculated how long it will take each of them to run the same distance, the same one mile, I can see that Mr. Olson needs less time and is therefore faster. Mr. Olson, in this example, runs faster than Mr. O'Neill. Let's try one more example, this time with prices, something that I do often, which is to figure out which is the better deal or the best price. If we want to buy peanut butter, sometimes they sell us the same peanut butter in two different sizes. So we see here that we could buy 40 ounces of peanut butter for $6 or 16 ounces of the same peanut butter for $2.80. Since they are not the same size and they're not the same price, it can be hard to know right away which is the better deal. To do this, I'll see how much one ounce of peanut butter costs from each jar to know which is cheaper. The larger jar is $6 for 40 ounces, but I want to find out how much one ounce costs 
so I can compare it to one ounce of the smaller jar. To do that, I'm going to scale down by dividing by 40, right? I want to take my 40 ounces and divide it down to find just one of them. If I do that, I'll of course have to divide my $6 by 40. From my calculations, I see that is it will cost 15 cents to buy one ounce of the peanut butter. And that means that if I buy 40 ounces, each one of those ounces is um, a rate of 15 cents. It costs 15 cents for each. I'll need to do the same thing for the smaller jar to be able to compare their prices now. I've set this up in a similar way. And in this case, I need to scale down by dividing my 16 ounces by 16 to be able to find the price of just one of those ounces. So again, that means I need to divide my $2.80 by 16. So I'll go ahead and set that up. My calculation here turns out that each of these ounces is going to cost approximately 18 cents. It ends up being 17 and a half cents, but in money we don't go past our penny, so I'm going to round that to 18 cents for each ounce. Now that I have both of my calculations complete, I can compare these ounce for ounce, the rate of how much each peanut butter is charging per ounce of peanut butter, and I can see that this one is charging 15 cents for every ounce, and this one is charging 18 cents for every ounce. Therefore, my larger jar happens to be cheaper. It is the better deal. I would save more money in the long run by buying the bigger bottle of peanut butter or the bigger jar of peanut butter. Our essential question in this video was how we could use unit rate to compare different rates. We've seen two examples of this. We'll practice this more together. But basically, we just wanted to get the idea that if we can't compare two things directly, sometimes we need to scale it down to its unit price or its unit speed and find something that we can compare more easily.